coming up, the speed of sound. We're doing science! Hi, everybody. We are on location once again for Imagine It. We are inside of the Imagination Station van. I have Carl Nelson with me. What are we doing today, Carl? Take this tube. All right. Okay, these things are called whirlies. And what they are, it's a simple musical instrument. It's a tube that's got corrugated nubbins along okay. it, about the inside and outside. If I spin it slowly, not much happens. Mm -hmm. If I speed it up, we get a note, mm -hmm. go a little bit faster. Another note, even faster. OK, so Our what's happening? <laughs> so you try yours, see if you can get it. A little bit faster, just don't hit me. Oh boy. Or lose it. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. OK, so what happens is, as we're spinning this around, we're actually mm -hmm. slinging air molecules out the end. Others are coming in behind, and we're getting an airflow through the tube. These oh. little undulations uh -huh. cause the air to sort of circulate around inside the tube, causes all sorts of frequencies to be generated, but only those frequencies that fit the resonant frequencies of the tube get amplified. Huh. Okay. So instead of, instead of it going, uh, it goes, uh, uh, uh. So you get sure. distinct frequencies. And that's because of the ridges and uh, well, the, the shape? Well, it depends upon the length of the tube. Oh, OK. So, so every instrument has certain uh, resonant frequencies. Sure. Think of like a bugle. You blow into it, and you get certain yes. notes, right, without mm -hmm. even having to move any uh, valves. OK. So I thought what we'd try to do is do this on a large scale. That's why we're in the van. OK. OK. So instead of this little one-inch tube, we've got some drainage pipe here. Sure, <laughs> it's about of course 20, we do. 20 feet long of <laughs> drainage pipe. We've got one end going out the front of the van to capture some air. I don't know if you can hear any air coming through there. How fast are we going, Sarah? Uh, 20. We're going about 20 miles per hour. Okay. I don't hear anything. Slowly increase speed. We're going to see if we can find the resonant frequency. Where are we at? 35. OK, speed up a bit more. Oh, there we go. There we go. So that's, how, how, what's our speed? 40. 40, now we get a different tone. Yeah. Keep speeding up, maybe 45. Even louder. Yeah. Kick it up to 50. Okay. I don't know what the speed limit is. See if you can go a little bit fa faster. <laughs> So 55. 55. Can, all right, go ahead and slow down gradually. Oh, there you go. So you start to hear a decrease. Where are we at? 40. And then that and kind then of kind of, it kind of drops out. 30, right? Yeah. yeah. And so what's happening there? It's really interesting. And it's the same thing that happens with the tubes. If you spin it slow enough, mm -hmm. the air can flow through in what's called laminar flow. So there's no crazy oscillations happening from the undulations of the tube. Okay. And you can't excite its fundamental frequency. But as we start to speed up, go a little bit faster, Sarah. As we go a little bit faster, the air inside becomes turbulent. It starts mixing around a lot, and that excites those frequencies. Hmm. And only the ones that are resonant frequencies get amplified. Wow. So that's why you get those distinct tones. Well, that all that sounds like two tones overlapping. Very cool. It's interesting. Well, I'll tell you what, we followed the speed limit during this one. We're out on a rural Absolutely. road, but I'll tell you what, that is pretty cool that you can see the science behind what's happening in these little instruments. And practical application is never make a vacuum cleaner with a hose that has undulations in it. No. And you're going to get tones all the time as you're vacuuming. Well, there you go. All right, Carl, <laughs> thanks for joining us once again. Very cool. That is how you imagine it on location.